Good morning, guys. I am out pretty early this morning on the job site because we have a very big day today. Our first semi truck load full of ICF box flex walls just started pulling down our driveway so we are gonna be unloading the truck so we have a very busy and exciting day ahead of us today building our forever home was something we dreamt about since the day we got married we are Erin and Dina we're dreamers DIYers and doers and together we're building a beautiful life so we got everything unloaded and as you can see it just started to rain so it's all gonna just sit here for a little while um, until this rain lets up and then we will walk it all the way down to the job site which is way down there Today was a very awesome day. I mean, just look behind me. We've got all of these ICF blocks waiting to be stacked. Um, it feels really, really good to have all of the materials here that we need to get started. This is one semi truck full and it's not quite all we need for our basement, but it's enough to get us started. The next truckload is getting delivered a week from today, we have three semi truckloads coming um, total. I don't know if you guys remember, but last year in September, my sister and her husband built their entire house using ICF blocks from Fox Blocks. And we were able to go out there and help them stack, and we were also out there on four days. So we learned a lot from helping them. And if you go to foxblocks.com, they have a ton of information on their website. They actually have education courses that you can take. Um, they have a representative for every area. So we were assigned a representative to help us make sure that we were ordering everything. We've actually been working with him for months. Um, so this is pretty exciting. very excited about how much we were able to get done over the weekend. I can't even tell you how much of a game changer it is using these versus doing an entire basement out of a cinder block. The masonry is so much more tedious and takes so much longer and it's so heavy. It's just strenuous, um, you know, labor intensive work. This is a completely different ball game. These box blocks are four feet long. They weigh practically nothing. They're so easy to move around and stack and climb ladders with. Um, it's just been such a wonderful experience so far and we couldn't be more thrilled to be partnering with Fox Blocks for this project. And Fox Blocks has been absolutely incredible to work with. They have a representative that has been um, working, uh, you know, back and forth with us, making sure that we have everything that we need. He even offered to come up here, um, fly up here and walk us through everything. And we felt very confident that we could do this because we had helped um, family members on their builds before. Um, so we told him no need to come up, uh, but he's been available all of the time, answering all of our questions and uh, you know answering our phone calls. And it's just been fantastic. All of the communication back and forth has been great and I think that's why this has been so smooth and so successful is just because Fox Blast really got us started off on the right foot. And I highly recommend that you check out their website if you're interested in building at all using ICF construction. They have so much helpful information on their website. They've got all kinds of training and courses and Q&As, YouTube videos, you name it, they've got it.
out here today working on the house. You can see behind me, we've only got a little bit of wall left to build. We've been saving that section until last just because that is the only way we can get in and out right now um, until we build some sort of um, scaffolding or a ladder over our patio door entrance, which we haven't done yet because um, that's on the other side of the house. And this is the easiest way to get in and out. So we've left that open, but as far as the rest of the house goes, we've got everything uh, stacked. We've got almost all of the rebar in. We've got everything uh, braced on that part of the house. And we've just got to build this wall and brace this part of the house. We've got all of our common seams uh, braced together. I've started foaming all of those seams with the great stuff. We've got all kinds of things completed and we've only got two days left before our concrete pour to get everything else done so we're going to be very busy today and tomorrow and even friday morning leading up into the pour our pour isn't until noon um, which is fantastic because it's going to take quite a few hours we've got to pour this in courses because our walls are so tall we can only go up four feet or so at a time so it is going to take a little while to get everything poured on friday so i'm glad that it's not super early in the morning simply because we'll probably have last minute things to finish up, um, tedious stuff, you know, and double checking everything and making sure we've got everything that we need. Um, another thing that we're gonna get in place are some scabs. So basically, if there were to be any kind of a problem, like a blowout or any section that wasn't holding, we would have a plywood already cut with screws in it and a drill ready to go to place it over any leaking areas. Um, that typically does not happen and we're gonna go over everything and make sure that we did it all correctly but you never know you always want to be prepared just in case something like that were to happen so I'm down in the basement and I thought it would be really fun to give you guys a little walk through a tour not necessarily of the basement but of the ICF wall system to explain it a little bit better so you can kind of see how the walls go together and how it all works before we close up this last wall here behind us all the different ICF blocks come in different shapes and sizes. Our basement specs on our blueprints called for eight inch walls, meaning the concrete in the center of the form is gonna be eight inches thick. And then we've got a couple of inches on either side of the insulated foam. And then running through each of the blocks is a webbing and that makes up your stud. And that is what you're able to screw your drywall to on your interior and your siding to on the exterior. So it really is just an all in one solution for framing up your walls and insulating your house all at the same time. They're very lightweight, they're easy to assemble. They look like Lego blocks, actually. I'm gonna grab a Fox block and I'm gonna show you the interior so you guys can get a good idea of what they actually look like. And then I'm gonna walk you around, show you how the system goes together and then I'm gonna show you inside one of our walls. And so I just grabbed a couple of pieces of Fox blocks, just some scraps that we had laying around, and I wanted to give you a close up look so you can get an idea. So the top of these are just like a Lego. They are interlocking and they're interchangeable. So the bottom will line up with the top here. No matter how you flip them, it keeps your studs running evenly all the way down, even if you cut them. So on the ends here, we have another interlocking system and then anywhere where you need to make a cut that's where you're going to have a common seam and a common seam is i'll show you up close this we already have braced and foamed but a common seam is going to have to happen on any wall that's not divisible by four because these blocks come in four feet another thing is it has this webbing on the inside here is the webbing. This is where you place your rebar. This is also what allows you to internally clip the rows together and across. Another thing that's really great about these blocks is there is a stud every eight inches instead of every 16. So instead of 16 non-center studs, we've got eight. And I don't know if you can see this, but there are words that say fox blocks everywhere you have a stud, making it super easy to add your siding or your drywall or whatever. Now, if you go back and watch the video of us pouring our footings, you'll remember that we have all of these vertical rebar in the ground and they actually are bent, um, allowing them to really be secured and not pull up. Now I wanna show you inside of a wall. So you can see we've got our wall on our chalk line here on our footing. We've got it all sprayed 
with great stuff to keep it in place and to add extra insulation. And then this is the inside of the wall. So we've got our webbing, we've got the rows clipped together here. You can see with these HV clips, we've got our rebar in place and our blueprints called for us to alternate a rebar into put rebar on the very bottom row as well as every other block and then on the very top row. Once you have some blocks stacked and they're high enough and you've got everything in place, you know that your wall is in the right spot, it's on your chalk line, and you've got your wall secured with the foam, then you place your bracing up on the wall. And this bracing is super cool because it also serves as scaffolding. It holds your wall in place and it allows you to, once we add all of the planking for the scaffolding up here, it's gonna allow us to walk around the entire perimeter of our house while we're doing our concrete pour. So when it comes to framing out a window, we chose to use the Bucks that Fox Blocks has. It's a really cool system. The Bucks come in any size that you need for your window and you can just cut them just like you can the Fox Blocks. And if you can see here, it's not the wood, it's the foam. These Bucks have two one inch grooves and they have like holes on the front. So the water can weep through basically and you can pour your concrete and the water comes through the holes and that's what helps guarantee your anchorage so we have these foamed as well as taped in place until the foam dried after we had all of our bucks put in then we added two by six bracing um, it called for two by four but we had two by sixes so we overbuilt it um, we figured better safe than sorry and we've got it all anchored on the top now i'm still going to add another uh, brace across here and then across the bottom and once i have all of that bracing completed i am going to drill some large holes in between all of my webbing my studs that are in this um, because this does have webbing all around the exterior so you can screw in all of your siding or drywall or whatever it is that you're using to complete your house but i will have to have holes in between so we can pump the concrete right in and make sure that we have all of this full of concrete under each window and that we have no air pockets. We have a total of seven windows down in this basement. Each of them are three by five. And then way down there around the corner, if you turn to the left, there is a set of patio doors. You can see behind me that I have two windows, one on each side of our patio doors. That's gonna be our walkout. And then of course the rest, I mean, this is a basement, so we don't have a lot of windows. That area is the only area that has windows. Um, it's the family room, the bedrooms, the hallway. We, we wanted it to be as light and bright as we could possibly get it down here in the basement. So we added the large door and the seven windows, and that was as many as we could fit in here with our egress. We're gonna do a lot of extra bracing in this simply because it's a large door and we're gonna add an X and we're gonna make sure that all of the weight of that concrete that's gonna be poured above this door doesn't sag, that it's very well supported. And if you notice the back of these windows out here from the outside of the house, I've got braces that are at an angle. So I've got diagonal every other way all the way down. All in all, it's gone pretty fast. We're very excited about pouring in just a couple of days. We have a lot of work to do yet ahead of us, but it's like tedious stuff. It's like, you know, adding a little bit more rebar vertically into these walls. Um, before we can do that, we've got to get up the rest of the scaffolding, make sure that we can safely walk around up there. It's so much easier to drop the rebar in once you're on scaffolding instead of moving your ladder, you know, cause this, this rebar has to go in vertically every 19 inches. So that's something we've got to do today. And it's got a lot of little things that have to be done. So our plan today is just to get as much done as we possibly can before the sun sets. Sun's been going down around eight. Typically I can get a 12 or 13 hour day in um, as long as it's not raining. <laughs> It's pretty exciting. Just in a couple of days, we're gonna have some permanent concrete walls. Um, we're gonna have a super insulated house. They don't make them any better. They don't make them any safer. So we're very, very excited. So I wanted to take a minute and answer some of your questions about the Fox blocks and how we are framing out our doors and windows. And basically what we're using is a product that they offer called Bucks. 
This is a really cool system. We chose to purchase these instead of using lumber to frame out our windows for a couple of reasons. So one, lumber a lot of times can be warped. We wanted it to be very uniform. And secondly, over time, that lumber is going to expand and contract. And at some point, that lumber is going to swell and you're gonna have issues with your windows or doors not opening and shutting properly due to the fact that lumber moves and it you know retains moisture and it shrinks and it can cause all kinds of problems so it you can use it but using the box is a lot better solution because this is made out of the same foam and it won't do that it won't expand and contract so you'll have a uniform rough opening it won't change shape and it won't cause you problems down the road opening your windows or using your slider doors Another reason why we chose to use the box instead of lumber is simply because when you apply this, you are gonna be using spray foam insulation to seal up the edges, and then you're gonna seal it in place and tape it to hold it. And that means you're not gonna have any airflow issues or um, heat loss through your windows. Um, because this is so well insulated. Wood is not insulated. So if you decide to frame out your doors and windows using lumber, you're gonna have a little bit of heat loss through that, even if you uh, spray all around your windows with um, some type of foam, you're still gonna have some heat loss um, through that lumber. So those were the reasons why we chose to go with the buck system. These are actually really great. They have uniform ridges. They also have some holes. I don't know if you can see that, but they've um, got those in there to allow for any like water runoff when you're doing your concrete pour to seep through there and it really adheres it. That's what allows it to adhere so well. So we really like that. These boxes do have all of the studs in there um, and you can see wherever they have the words here that say buck, that's your stud. And they also have um, around the edges. That way when you're applying your trim or uh, your siding or your drywall, you can just screw right into this, making it super simple to use. So that's what we decided to go with instead of lumber for framing up our windows. They're just as easy to work with as the blocks because they're foam, they're super light, and they're really easy to cut.
because I'm down in the basement. Obviously, you can tell that we've poured. Uh, you can see a little bit of the water runoff behind me on the wall. That's totally normal. That's nothing to worry about. Um, the only thing you want to worry about is if you have um, any area where concrete is actually pouring out or bowing the block. Um, that's called a blowout, but this is normal. That's just a little bit of water seepage, um, and it does drain down the wall and you know, kind of pull up on your footing a little bit in some spots, and that's totally fine. We've just been working on getting some of the bracing down and removing some of the two by fours from our common seams and just trying to clean up and get ready for the next thing. Today is a fantastic day. Behind me, you can see that we have our basement completely uh, poured and we've actually already started taking some of the bracing off. You can see we've got some of these straps off and um, it's time for the scaffolding to come down uh, because these walls are poured and and cured. We're very thrilled that this went as well as it did. We had quite a large crew. We had um, my family, my husband and I, our two teenage kids. We had my nephew and my brother come help. We also had my sister and my brother-in-law come help, uh, my husband's parents, and my dad as well. So we had a large crew. Many hands make a light work, and it definitely was very appreciated that we had so many people show up for the pour. We started our pour at noon, and I'd say about 4.30, we were completely done. And we had 83 yards of concrete poured. So I'd say that's pretty good for a family of DIYers. You know, we'd never done this before, and we were really thrilled with how it went. We had a couple of issues where I could have done a little bit better on the bracing for the windows, um, where it started to sag a little, and we had to add in a couple more two by sixes, but lesson learned uh, for the next story when we do the upper level, um, I'm definitely going to brace those a little differently and add a little bit more support. But other than that, it went fantastic, and we couldn't be happier with how it turned out. It feels really, really great to have the basement walls in. We've got all of the rebar sticking out, our wet sets, um, uh, three feet above. And that's just so when we set our next course for the upper level, um, we have the rebar going from the lower level all the way up through, and it'll be overlapped, and that's what gives your wall even more support. I'm gonna walk up on the highest hill here and give you guys a view. Um, like a bird's eye view of the house. So this probably makes a lot more sense if you've seen our other videos before when I just showed our footings. It probably makes more sense now that we have walls up. So this shorter wall that goes around all the way to the right here and then comes around in the front of the house. On top of this will be our uh, porch. So it'll be a front porch and a side porch and underneath it is all cold storage. And then anywhere where you see the red tape on top of the wall, that's all heated living space. And the reason why we added that tape is just to keep all of the top of the Fox blocks really, really clean. We're gonna peel that off um, when we set the next course. But taping that off allowed us to keep it super clean during the pour and not get a bunch of concrete and all of those you know, little Lego blocks. So down on the far end all the way to the left you can see that we have all of our floor joist hangers in those had to go in before we poured the concrete um that is what was stolen unfortunately we had them delivered and they were stolen right out of our yard um and we had to rush and you know try and find more they're actually watkins hangers it's our preferred method for putting the floor joist in there's a lot of different ways that you can connect to your lower level of icf walls to your upper level, but that's just how we chose to do it. And I'm really glad it worked out and we were able to find some replacement hangers. Now that we have all of the basement walls stacked and poured, our goal before winter is to get all of this waterproofed. We've got to wrap it and then we're going to back fill and compact around the perimeter and a little bit more in the interior. We need a little bit more fill to be brought in through the door there and um, our goal is to get it just kind of wrapped up and sealed up enough for winter that we can work down in the basement. We'd like to get our plumbing in the ground. We're gonna have some in-floor heating. So those are the kind of things that we're gonna be working on next. 
So all in all, it went really, really well. We learned a ton. We're very grateful for all the help that we had. We know how blessed that we are to have such supportive family um, around us that pitch in whenever we have big things like this going on, like a concrete pour. Um, it was fantastic to have all the extra help and we couldn't be happier with the progress that we've made this fall, these basement walls. Um, it's a dream come true, really.